Hello and welcome to Trudy Carmichael presents the one woman, the improvised one woman show. Now, watch as I unwrap the mic cord. They really tie, tie them in here good, yes? One more. Almost done. And it's free. <laughs> Thank you guys. Oh, I love the applause. Actually, you're not only good looking, can we hear more applause? Let's see how much, how much? Yes, awesome, cool. Oh, let Trudy know it, because Trudy is in the building. So I'm Shane Tamor, um, but I'll be, uh, I'll be exiting soon, so you'll, the, the true talent will emerge. Uh, out of curiosity, though, I'm curious to know, who has seen an improvised show before? A completely improvised show, round of applause. Okay. Um, well, completely improvised show, that means that every single thing that you see is going to be completely made up. That means all of the words that Trudy says, all the banter between you, and, and you, will be, um, you will be as involved in the show as you want to be. You don't need to be, but you, the more the better. Um, I mean, you already uh, applaud so well. I hope that you would be uh, gracious enough to be a part of this, this show. Um, but also, uh, every note played by Johnny Thorne over here is completely improvised. So all the songs, original compositions. Um, so you are here to see uh, the very first and only time that this show will ever be, um, will ever be, will ever be performed. Um, have you ever seen a cabaret before? Round of applause for if you've seen a cabaret before. Awesome, cool, so you know she's gonna do an improvised cabaret. You guys are all ready to go. And so without further ado, please let me welcome the one, the only, Trudy Carmichael! <laughs> so fabulous to be here today at the, in the beautiful city of Edinburgh, composing, making up fabulous cabarets on the spot, different shows every single day. And I know that each and every one of you is my number one fan. So, right? Am I right? You're all my number one fans. One, two, three, four, five fans. <laughs> Top five, at least. And so, as you know, I am somewhat of a diva. Um, but I embrace that term with both open arms. And uh, the thing is, I'm a different kind of diva because I actually like to sing about myself, but I also like to sing about other people and what other people like and want and need. So we're all in this together today. And in order to get started, I would love to get some suggestions of things that you would like to see and hear during the course of this cabaret, such as, if you have a suggestion of a, um, a song style or a genre of music that you enjoy. Opera. Opera, okay, fabulous, fabulous. We have opera, Johnny and I have opera in our repertoire. Mm -hmm. Any other suggestions, any other, um, perhaps, a, you know, a, a song that you like, that, you know, one of your favorite songs and we can get an idea of another song style. 90s pop. 90s pop? 90s pop. Okay, so are we talking like Britney, little Britney? Okay, maybe a little Christina. Okay, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about that. I'm all about that. Fabulous. And is there anything that you would also like to share that you absolutely love? You know, something maybe that you've experienced during your time here, or just something that gets you out of bed every morning? A like or a love? Murder. Murder? Murder. <laughs> police? Pol police? <laughs> police security? Uh, we have a murderer in the... <laughs> oh, you're just a fan of murder. Okay, fabulous. Murder. All right, wonderful. So we've got murder and opera. We've got 90s pop. Christina Aguilera. Britney Spears. Oh my god, this is going to be an incredible cabaret. <laughs> the last thing I like to ask, no pressure at all, but... Sometimes I like to have a title, you know, either an opening song title or a title of the show. And just putting together those things of opera and 90s pop and murder. Is there a title or a song title that you've never heard before that you'd like to shout out to me to get us started? 
that's okay. Because I can just say that this is an operatic, an, or a murder opera. I mean, there are so many people who are jealous of me, right, Janine? Jealous of my many talents for singing everything from opera to folk to country to 90s pop! People always want to get in my way. They want to steal my thunder. And so I have been murdered. <laughs> and now I am but a ghost floating on the wind asking you for help to avenge the person who is responsible for my death. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, baby, baby. How was I supposed to know? Something wasn't right here Oh baby, baby I couldn't have let you go I was just singing Making beautiful music Minding my own business When all of a sudden I was poisoned Oh, oh baby, baby How was I supposed to know that something wasn't right Oh baby, baby I should have known And I fell for it I got poison What about me? <laughs> what about me, Christina? Oh I was murdered too. Oh, I was murdered too. Oh, baby, we gotta find 
the culprit. Yes, we do, Christina and Brittany. <laughs> Brittany, I'm sorry. Brittany's over here. Christina's over there. <laughs> and me, Trudy. The three of us together must team up to find the person who killed us. They've got to be out there brought to justice. Christina, Christina. Maybe you want to take a little bit of a break. Don't be too rough on your throat, okay? I know you're very throaty. I'll take it from here. Oh, Avengers! Oh, somebody please, Avengers! After all, we were all so young, relatively speaking. I mean, we're all kind of in. Never mind, it's none of your business how old we are. But you must avenge us. We still had so much life to live. We still had so much music to give. You must avenge us. Through our music, we shall live on. But still, from dust to dawn, please, Avengers! Thank you. Thank you. This is all, as you know, a completely true story. <laughs> and none of it is manufactured one bit. I mean, oh my god. I have been compared to the fabulous divas my whole entire life. And, um,. I mean, even though maybe I'm not as well known as Brittany and Christina. And who are some other divas of the 90s? Um, who else? Whitney Houston, of course. Oh, Whitney, another one gone too soon, never forgotten. But just, I still, I still hope that, you know, my death will be remembered, I won't be lost in the headlines amongst the bigger voices, amongst the bigger, more popular people. Like Tina Turner. Oh, and Tina Turner as well. Barbara. <laughs> Are these fabulous? Are you just impressed with my incredible <laughs> wealth of somewhat mediocre impressions of these divas. <laughs> Just hang in with me. between Lee and Michelle. Have you met? No, this is a United States thing, perhaps. Where are you from? Where? New York. You're from New York? Okay, thank God. So you know what I'm talking about. Lee and Michelle and Beanie Feldstein. Do you know Beanie, Beanie and, and, well, I'll, I'll educate. Where are you all from? Are you all UK? Yeah. Okay, and you as well? Yeah. Okay, fabulous. So in New York City, where I spend a lot of time, um, there was a whole big hubbub about who was going to be playing a uh, funny girl on Broadway, originated by Barbara Streisand, and they hired adorable little Beanie, Beanie Feldstein, who apparently was not up to snuff, according to the audience and producers. I don't know what that's like, because I'm always up to snuff. <laughs> but Leah Michelle, who was from Glee, she's a diva with a toxic personality, she really wanted the role, but the producers gave it to Beanie instead. They said, 
really we're gonna give you a shot we're gonna let you do what you want and try to make the most of this famous role even though you're just okay when it comes to singing anyway we're gonna give you your big shot at this role and so she came out singing and dancing and swinging and doing her thing but the audiences weren't happy with it they said no good, you're trash, little beanie. You gotta get off that stage. You're just not good enough, little beanie, for somebody of your age. So, what choice did she have? What could she do but take her exit? And guess what? They hired Leah Michelle behind her back. Those bastards! Oh, Leah Michelle, that toxic, murderous vixen, <laughs> coming to Broadway from Fox's Glee. Have you heard of that show, Glee, where all the high school students were singing in a choir? It didn't age well, but nonetheless. <laughs> Leah Michelle, she said, hey, Mr. Producer, come on in, give me the part, it's the role that I was always born to play. Oh, has worked with me in the past thinks that I am toxic and not okay I'm gonna take the role and I'm gonna slay so now poor little Beanie has been essentially killed murdered by the enormous machine of Broadway. I mean, don't you think that is so sad and mis disturbing for them to treat her in this way? So, my message to you, Miss Leah Michelle, we all know who you are. We all know you too well. We know that you are not deserving at all. Even though you may play the part, you may call it the highest form of art, but you don't deserve it. You killed that old you murderer. Because my show is always educational at some point. So this was a this was a Leah Michelle Beanie Feldstein Broadway Drama 101. Thank you for attending my TED Talk. <laughs> and I will say, you know, I always believe in women supporting other women. And so I believe that women of Broadway need to support one another. All the divas of the world should support one another. So I guess I am a bit biased and I guess that, you know, I just revealed an ugly part of myself by coming down very hard on Leah Michelle. But she's got a reputation, and it's not a nice one. Am I right? I mean, I'm not crazy, right? She's known as being- People deserve a second chance, I'm sure. <laughs> John, are you really, you're gonna be the angel on my shoulder. You're gonna be the little angel on my shoulder. You're always the good influence, telling me that I shouldn't be so hard on other people. And I suppose, you're right, people do deserve a second chance. So maybe she will suddenly be an angel, you know? She'll, now that she has the, the role of her dreams, maybe suddenly she'll be the most charitable, generous, 
beautiful person in the world. I haven't, I haven't thought of that at all. Do you think that people deserve second chances? Okay. All right. All right, detective. If you say so. I guess you're right. I never thought about it that way. I shouldn't be so quick to judge. But I hope you understand me when I say I'm the most judgmental girl sometimes, sometimes. Yes, I can be the most judgmental girl sometimes. And I know that I should try, but still I'm the most judgmental girl sometimes. If you happen to wrong me, Michelle, I wouldn't treat you so well. But if you come out and apologize, I suppose I should give you a second chance this time. Oh, I need to stop being such a judgmental Chance. Because being judgmental is just makes you kind of bitter. And it's not fair. I need to open myself up and realize that all of us are human. Isn't that true? And if I want people to respect me like I want them to, I need to give that back to them as well. And stop being such a judgmental girl, such a judgmental girl. After all, I'm not judge and jury, but I am a judgmental girl. I really have been looking inside of myself and realizing some personal growth to do. So, thank you, John. Thank you, Detective, for opening my eyes. You know, ever since I was murdered, I've gotten increasingly bitter about life because I have FOMO, you know? Everybody else is out there having fun, living their lives, and I'm just a sad little ghost floating around Wondering what would have been, what could have been. And perhaps in order to release myself from these chains of bitterness, I need to forgive. So, Michelle, go back there. I know it was you who murdered me. I'm sorry. I, I... Take her away. Take her away, detective. I mean, you're the one that brought up the topic of murder at the start. Who else could it have been? <laughs> How did you do it? It was poison. It was a poison lozenge. I had these little honey, these little propolis um, honeybee lozenges that I like to have before a show. I knew something tasted off about it. But still I ingested it. I ate every single bit of it and I swallowed it down including the poison I could feel it coursing through my veins making me feel just a little insane and suddenly I knew this was the end. Oh, it was my untimely
I can't get up there lately. I, I need to warm up a little bit more. <laughs> it's almost there. It's very close. Are you a singer as well, by any chance? Okay, but you know singers. Do you, do, you, um, do you have a lot of friends who are singers and divas and do they drive you crazy singing around you all the time? Your best friend? <laughs> in the best way. Oh, okay. I thought you said your <laughs> best friend. In the best, best way. Friend. Oh, good. Do you ever do karaoke? Sadly. Okay. All right. Fabulous. I love karaoke. And I have a lot of singer friends who, um, who they are too proud to do karaoke. But not me. I love it. I just, I'll, I'll get up there. I'll intimidate the crap out of anybody. And say, hey, <laughs> watch this. Watch this, Michelle. So now I guess I'll be singing, singing karaoke, karaoke from heaven. Oh, I don't even need the words. Scrolling across the crowd, the clouds in the sky. I already know the tune of how I have died. Oh, singing in karaoke heaven. If I should stay, I would only be in your way. And so Cause heaven knows I'll think of you every step of the way And I will always Oh, I just realized those were the words to Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You Actually written by Dolly Parton originally But did you realize that was th those were the lyrics to that song? <laughs> Oh my god, that's a new ability that I have to just sing lyrics to other songs. To different music. Oh, that's fabulous. I'm creating my own karaoke on the spot. We had Barbara Streisand too. People, people who need people. That's all the words I know to that song. <laughs> hmm. Well, that was a fun little party trip. <laughs> you know, I think that if I want it badly enough, I might be able to be resuscitated and brought back to life. Because this is fun, you know. This is fun being in a, on a heaven, heavenly stage. But really, I think I, I miss my life. I mean, after all, I have another, I don't know, how many more, uh, um, how many more shows do I have, Shane? We've got another 18. 18 shows to do. And I mean, I've spent, you know, I've invested so much money to be here and I rented the theater and everything. And, you know, so if I'm dead, it's going to be such a waste. Someone else is going to just, you know, take my spot. I don't want somebody else to take my spot. I need to come back to the world of the living. The only way that I can do that is if just like Tinkerbell, you applaud, applaud for me. You have to believe that I can come back to life.
It was absolutely heavenly, but it wasn't good enough. I miss the real life experience. I'd rather be flying around down here than up there. After all, I still have so much to do. Thank you for giving me. figure this out. But you'll still get a commendation. They do that here, right? Okay, good. Fabulous. So thank you. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your service. And Michelle, thank you for giving me a second chance. A chance to see myself in a totally different light on a totally different plane. I mean, once you've died, you really do gain a certain kind of perspective on life. And I'm never gonna 
take anything for granted again. No, I'm always gonna look for second chances. And I'm gonna live my life to its fullest. Aren't we all gonna live our lives to their fullest? Oh, yes, just say yes. Good, okay. Oh, when you've been murdered, it gives you a new perspective. But it's good to have a little bit of distance from yourself every once in a while. for murdering me. It's a strange thing to say, but I really feel Okay, good. <laughs> what time is it? All right. Are you saying that we have time for another? Yeah, we have time. We definitely have time for one more. We have time for an encore? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <gasps> Chen was doing this. Does that mean encore time? Yeah, it means encore time. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to oblige. I'm not gonna sit around in Paris. Not gonna let you kick me into a gutter. I'm gonna take the piss out of this parade. I have to just win, I got to. I gotta get out there, I simply have to. And I'm not gonna wait around to rain on my parade. Oh, beat all the drums. Oh, beat down all the doors. audition for Funny Girl on Broadway and take down Leah Michelle. I know I said I forgave her and was going to give her a second chance, but no, I'm coming for you. So if you love this show, and I, I, I know you did, you all love this show completely. It's your favorite show you've ever seen in, in all the fringes in all the world. So thank you so much for that compliment. Um, but feel free to spread the word. Tell your friends, tell your lovers, tell your enemies. Even if you didn't like the show, it's going to be a different show every single day of the fringe. So, you know, spread the word around. If you would like to go to the Ed Fringe website, you can leave an audience review. Only leave one if it's going to be a rave. If it's not a rave, then just send it, you know, send it to yourself in an email, just to get it out of your system. But if you loved it, fabulous audience review, tweet me at Trudy Carmichael. And um, thank you so much again for coming today. I'm Trudy Carmichael. I always will be. <laughs> <laughs>